everybody. Happy Thursday. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the PH Next Fridays podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. And we are finally back from the Great White North, as PD was saying every day. Uh, she's You're still right. there. She's still there. Make it back. I'm back. Uh, and I'm here with Craig. And PD, I guess we did a little tap out situation because he's sitting this one out today. But we're yeah, excited. It hasn't happened for me yet. But yeah, we're I'm excited to be joined by a couple of very special guests. Before we get to that, though, I uh, just wanted to tell everybody about our new partner, Pins and Aces. I'm really excited about this partnership. They're the official golf apparel partner of All City and PHNX. We got a new podcast added to the network, Big Drive Energy. So if you're a golf fan at all, be sure to check them out. You can click the link in the show notes to sign up for our Keeping It 100 Golf Tournament at Dobson Ranch on May 26th. It's going to be a blast. Pins and Aces will be there. There'll be prizes, etc. So check out pinsandaces.com and use code PHNX to receive 15% off your first order and get free shipping. That's pinsandaces.com. They have amazing, amazing apparel and Craig, now that I'm back in the Valley, my first stop after work today has to be Illegal Pete's. Um, <laughs> I, I've gone too long without the chips and queso. Too long. Um, and you can check that out, Illegal Pete's on Mill in Tempe. Uh, they have delicious ingredients, customizable options. They're a perfect way to treat your guests to a culinary adventure they'll never forget. So if you want to book a catering order, you can head to catering.illegalpete's.com. Illegal Pete's, your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. All right, well, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. I know it's the reason everyone's here today, and we are very, very excited to welcome in two former mayors of Tempe, Hugh Homan and Neil Giuliano. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Privilege. Appreciate Thank it. You for having us. <laughs> uh, we're just 19 days out now from the, the election, but who's yeah. who's counting? <laughs> I am. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can probably see a pile of papers um, in front of. Mayor Hallman. Um, so we're, obviously lots to get into, but I'll I'll toss over to Craig. To yeah, I, I want to there's there's been a lot to digest with this campaign on both sides. And some of the uh, some of the topics feel well worn, but I want to touch on some that have risen more recently. And we'll, we'll get a little a little bit granular and then maybe we'll back out a little bit and, and focus on your thoughts on the campaign. But one of the things that I've heard recently from Tempe Purse is that the landfill is really not that toxic. It's just a, a beloved compost yard. <laughs> you both served as mayor, so you would know what's really there and whoever wants to jump in, have at it. I think it starts uh, with the Mayor Giuliano. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll set the stage and then Mayor Hallman can, can really bring this one home, literally. Uh, look, the, that area along the river bottom, first of all, thank you for having us on. It's really important. Really appreciate the opportunity to, to talk to your listeners. Hello, all your listeners everywhere, but especially the ones in Tempe who've already mailed in a ballot or have one sitting on your kitchen table, perhaps. <laughs> that area along the river bottom in the beginning days of this valley was way out in the middle of nowhere. And it was the garbage dump. It was where everything went from downtown Phoenix, from when Tempe was first founded, all along the route. That was, it was, you know, who would ever be all the way out there by that, by that area? So that was the garbage dump and for generations. And uh, I'll let Mayor Hallman talk about his family experience because he was born and raised in Tempe. I didn't get here until 1974, but uh, Mayor Hallman knows directly what's really in that garbage dump. Yeah. <laughs> and personally, I think is what uh, Mayor Giuliano is trying to say. Uh, since I was a, uh, when I was a little kid, we would on Saturdays take the stuff that households used to have that would go to a dump and take them to the Tempe dump. It was a, <laughs> kind of a treat to get to go with my father to the Tempe dump because, you know, you could still scavenge in those days and you might find something really cool. Uh, in this instance, uh, Mayor Giuliano deserves the credit for the uh, executing on the vision that really started before even Harry Mitchell. Uh, his predecessor, to create the Rio Salado project. And we argued over all of that kind of stuff. As uh, I think one of your listeners has already tweeted out, you know, <laughs> Neil and I have rarely agreed on anything. But when we do agree on something, you know it's the right thing to do. <laughs> and in this instance, it was Mayor Giuliano, once he had envisioned executing on and getting the town lake completed, which was a big lift, we were looking at the real estate around the lake and what it should become given what was going on. And this area was all these old landfills. And that's when Neil and I may have agreed the first time on something in, a, in an issue review session at the hotel, in fact. It was across the street at the hotel talking about the land in this area was all with dumps underneath it. Mm -hmm. The only way to get that done 
uh, to get it improved would have to be to pull in the private sector. Okay. And this particular dump, we uh, finally asked the coyotes to release the borings they did. Why did why did they do borings in the landfill? Because this document is about protecting the city of Tempe from risk. And we required the developer to understand exactly what they were getting. Because as a lawyer for the city of Tempe, for free, but still their lawyer, I didn't want my client, the city of Tempe, getting sued by the developer for, for misrepresentation of what they were getting. Okay. And the document describes that it's a toxic waste dump. We made them do borings. They finally agreed and last week released their own borings report, which shows the toxicity of the dumps that are underneath the stuff that's on top. The, quote, beloved uh, compost pile, <laughs> uh, beloved, I suppose, by a few people, even it's now contaminated and has to okay. be removed. So mm. it's a complete and utter lie to describe this thing other than a toxic landfill. That's what it is. That's what the developer knows they're getting when they figure out how expensive it is. And we've estimated uh, $94 million on the top end. The city actually planned uh, a few years ago mm. with the leader of the opposition, who was then a council member, about issuing potentially $100 million in bonds in order to get the money to start cleaning this up. And that would just get rid of the dump. Well, when you add to that $100 million of bond money, that's the principal, another $150 million in interest that the city would have to pay, that's a $250 million problem just to clean up the landfill. That's how big a problem it is. You, what's in there? What's in there? Is, is Jimmy Hoffa there, by the way? Um, well, I, I think he's still in New Jersey. Okay. Uh, I don't think he's been moved. But the uh, is that where he is, Neil? I don't know. You can't, you come uh, early. Yeah, my home in New Jersey wouldn't do such a thing. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> uh, in this instance, um, it is primarily a household waste dump. Okay. But what that meant is there was no control at all mm. on that, on this part of the uh, part of the dump. Other parts of the dump were construction dumps. Uh, they all had different sort of users. And in this instance, there's all kind of stuff in it. The most toxic material is now plastics that were thrown in from the old days that have all deteriorated and they're releasing their chemicals, most of which cause cancer. They're carcinogens. And worse, the report uh, that the developer got done shows that there's now moisture in that material. And so what's happened is the water table has risen because of Town Lake. You end up with a water bubble and that water has approached and now gotten to this dump, which then risks that the water table will get contaminated. Mm. So the city doesn't have any more time to goof around with this. This has got to get done. And pushing all of that risk and all that cost onto the private sector seems like the absolute right way to get this done. Yeah, I want to get to that in a minute. When was this decision made to make this a dumping site? How long ago are we talking? How long has it been in the current state? I know they keep piling on top of it, but how long has it been oh, like this? It has to have been 20 or 30 years before Hugh Holman was a kid. Yeah. Don't you yeah. think, Hugh? Yeah, absolutely. It probably dates back to the 40s. I probably can pull the records for it. It I may even go back to the 30s. Are... Yeah, it could be the 30s as, as well. Wow. The city had uh, some closer dump operations, but as the city grew, this part of the old part of the town got expanded. The dumps got pushed farther and farther out. But remember what this was like. Tempe's not the only city with a dump on the riverbed. Once the river was dammed up with the Roosevelt Dam and the water flow stopped, this became a desolate area and became, as Mayor Giuliano said, really the, the back gate. This was the alleyway for most of the cities. The Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community had their major landfill on the Salt River riverbed on the north side. Mesa had landfills there. So anybody that had land along the river, mm. that was the right place to dump it because there was nothing there. There was no water. There was no activity. And it was, truly was the back gate. Um, I want to ask, you know, if it's been sitting there for so long, has there ever been, and you mentioned the cost associated, but has there ever been an effort to, to get the site cleaned up? Do you want to start with that, with the Art Center? Well, so even even uh, before the Art Center was all the way on the east end, uh, a yeah. project known as Tempe Marketplace was a federal Superfund site <laughs> that uh, had it not been for the private sector coming forward with their proposal that Tempe sought. It's very similar to this. We have an idea. Is there anybody out there who wants to do this? Uh, they came forward with the idea of Tempe Marketplace, and, and that involved a major cleanup as well. Uh, and, and then, of course, the Tempe Center for the Arts uh, was uh, sited on top of a, I don't know if a similar landfill is the right word, but clearly a landfill. That had to be remediated in the tens of millions of dollars. So we're familiar with this enough to know the gravity of it, and the fact that, quite honestly, the city of Tempe just can't do this by themselves. And if there isn't a private sector entity to come along to partner 
uh, in exchange for hopefully building something that will be beneficial to the community and bring in revenue to the community and to the private sector owner who's taking that risk, uh, it wouldn't happen. Yeah. So to put some numbers on it, because that's, a, I guess, my forte, uh, the Tempe Marketplace, which started uh, during May Mayor Giuliano's tenure as mayor, um, and when you were on the council, actually, is when the assembly started, that started in 1996. We didn't break ground on that until 2005 or 2006, mm -hmm. and it got finished in 2007. So that's a, a 10 or 11 year process and cost $80 million to clean up that set of dumps. There are only two of them on the old, old county island. Uh, the Tempe Center for the Arts uh, number exceeded $30 million. Immediately adjacent since uh, Mayor Giuliano's tenure and my tenure, there's called the IDEA Campus and the uh, cleanup of the one dump where there are now buildings immediately to the west of the Tempe Center for the Arts cost $30.25 per foot. This land is valued at between $25 and $30 a foot. The cost of a cleaner dump, which was under the uh, Center for the Arts and next door to it, was already exceeding the price of the land. In this case, because of the borings, because of what the city knows is in there, that's why they thumbnailed the price and has gotten closer and closer to the real number of $100 million. Okay. And, and I, I want to clarify. Oh, go ahead, Neil. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, just, to, just to, to put a point on that, this is an important, and it's kind of an interesting backstory uh, but the real story is the aspiration for what the Tempe Entertainment District is going to bring, not the garbage that we're going to clean up. That has to be cleaned up. But the aspiration of, of bringing jobs to this site, of bringing professional sports back to Tempe. Look, one of the things we know about the life of cities, and, and cities live for hundreds of years, right? Tempe is a little over 150 years old. I've lived, you has lived here for more than a third of that tenure. I've lived here for almost one third of that tenure while Tempe has been a city. It's gonna live for another 150. And so two, two elements of society, we absolutely know are critically important to the fabric of a community. One is our faith communities. Faith is an indelible part of our culture. And the other is sports. And professional sports and the reverberations that has that, that has for collegiate sports, for high school sports, for even lower than high school sports, and the culture that brings the community together around sports mm. uh, is very, very significant for any major city, especially a young city like ours that's going to live for a whole lot longer. It's a very, very valuable component of a part of our culture. We have very strong faith communities within the city of Tempe, and we have a strong, strong collegiate sports culture with ASU. This professional sports culture is will permeate even further to strongly, strongly bind our community together from a cultural standpoint. So that's a kind of the way I view this, in addition to all the good things that are come from the cleanup and the project itself. Yeah, that civic pride component is something that always gets overlooked, in my opinion, when you start doing a just straight financial analysis of things. I don't know how you quantify it, but it is absolutely there. I want to clarify something with both of you. Um, has there been interest? I, I want to state this plainly. Has there been interest from developers in the past at this site in particular? And presumably that would include the cleanup costs. Has that occurred? Have you been approached in the past? Uh, I, Not I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I think Mayor Giuliano knows that this is probably our our biggest possibility, and it has the greatest risk and, and expense with it. This forty six acres, um, the city has had that land available for the last forty years. There has actually been an option on the property. It was given as part of an easier piece of property to do to the west of Priest uh, that wasn't picked up. And so you've got the fact that the city has tried, and this is not unique. The city has lands that it's held and has sought proposals, and sometimes they get some traction. But this is an example where this particular property is so complex and so difficult to do. It takes somebody with a lot of financial cap capacity and a big enough vision and a, and a thing to do it with. And it turns out that not unusually, uh, the hockey arena as the Cardinal Stadium on the north side were proposals that could solve the kinds of problems and mm. supply the kinds of resources that can solve those problems. I want to build on Mayor Giuliano's point. This is not the first time Tempe's had a professional sports team in its, in its community. Tempe brought the Cardinals to Arizona. <laughs> Tempe 
got them to come to Arizona, and ultimately through Mayor Giuliano's tenure, tenure got a practice facility built in the south of the city, which still exists, and the Cardinals played in Sun Devil Stadium for a very long time. That's how we got this started. You know, Jerry Colangelo put together the Suns. He was critical in putting together the Diamondbacks uh, deal. Um, but the other two major sports were done completely separately from that. And part of, I think, the challenge we're facing here is there are some cities who do not want to share those kinds of toys. Mm. And uh, Mayor Giuliano, during his tenure, worked diligently to try to put together a great and did put together a great deal for the Cardinals. And it got blown up by an airport that is vindictive and is trying to play the same game. Yeah, we are going to get to that in a moment as well. But I know Leah has a follow up question on. The, the current topic. Yeah, one of the narratives out there from the opposition is that there's a better deal out there. You know, the, everyone's saying, well, not this deal because there's something better. Can you comment on that notion that there's a better yeah, deal the, out there? Yeah, the, and, and to further that, it's that the RFP precluded other projects or developers from entering the process because an arena was required. So, I, I'm happy to tell you that the reason uh, you end up with the city staff saying we need a professional facility is because those have the size and character that can drive the rest of the economics. Mm. And by the end of the day, Tempe understood that when you include not just the cleanup cost for a likely total of $250 million, but the cost of building all the infrastructure that's required to make the property productive, the, the land there doesn't have the water lines, sewer lines, road access, it has a cutoff wall. That is the fancy word for saying the wall that protects the land from the river right. and town lake. Um, that all has to get built. And that's the bathtub throws, as Javier the calls it. Exactly. Yes. So the, the Tempe Town Lake is truly a bathtub. And downstream, that, uh, that empty portion has to be maintained for the flood channel. And all of that additional infrastructure adds another $100 million. So when you have the two points of cleanup for 100 million and the infrastructure for 100 million, all of which is city obligation. Then you add the interest on top of what the city would spend to borrow that money. It's $500 million. <laughs> You've got to have a really big project. Yeah. Oh, let's put affordable housing. You tell me how you build housing and cover $500 million in costs so expensive, and make that work. Affordable housing. It doesn't work. <laughs> And yeah. so that's or the a park, real, or a park, which that, isn't well, going to produce that's any revenue. Neil, that's where Neil and I came together. Was we're getting all kinds of proposals in the late '90s. Let's make it baseball fields. How do you build a park and cost yourself a half a billion dollars right. to build a park? That'll be the most right. expensive park ever built anywhere on the planet, and yeah. that's crazy. So the way this got we resolved this together was this land has to have a private sector driver that will get it cleaned up. Okay. Anything to add? And, and, and uh, that was a good explanation of it. And, and a private sector driver, uh, it's going to be a private business, right? But it, it can't just be an office business. It can't just be a, a, a small level product business. You, a professional sports team has capacity. They have TV contracts. They have sponsorships for everything that goes on with their business. This is an existing Tempe business, by the way. It's a business that currently operates in Tempe, it, uh, both uh, with their product, this is the team itself plays here, and their and their leadership is is headquartered here. So this is a business that has the capacity because of the kind of business that it is. Any other business, you know, someone who may want to just move their business to a nice office building there, they don't have TV contracts, they don't have advertising contracts, they don't have all that kind of capacity, right? So I think the city was very very wise. In, in pinpointing, and we were very fortunate the opportunity existed uh, to talk to a professional sports franchise about locating their business right at the intersection of a freeway. You get off the freeway and you're at the project uh, on a, the border of Tempe in a perfect location. But it, the key there is it has, it's a business that has the capacity to be able to do this kind of a project because of what it does for a living. I want to ask one other question before we go to an ad break here. Does the city have the money to clean up this site on its own? Uh, and I guess I should say, do I, I, it would fall on the taxpayers, would it not? But does the city even have the money in its budget to fund the cleanup of a site like this? Uh, because I've more recently touched those budgets and, you know, people are asking why all this paper? <laughs> because I, I, I'm here because, uh, like Mayor Giuliano, we've served our city. And I got pulled into this project 
because I have a set of skills that are useful. And my city council and, and city management said, we need your help, said, I, I'm, I can't do this. You're asking me to do hundreds of hours of work for free. And they said, well, not saying for free. Well, yeah, you are. Because I was mayor. Neither Mayor Giuliano nor I would take a contact track from a city where we were mayor. It would look terrible. Yeah. You know, it's it, so this is free labor of love here. <laughs> and the 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 point about all of this stuff is that in this effort, we've created a result that can deliver some huge value for our community. And at the end of the day, this is about that passion for our city. Yeah. Um, could the city clean this up? I can't tell you that the city couldn't cobble together $100 million. Of course it could. But every single dollar then would come out of the Tempe tax base. When the city sells bonds, it sells bonds as a lien against all the property in its city. That's why we have votes about whether a city is going to issue bonds. Yeah. Property taxpayers get to vote on that because there's a lien that goes against their property to pay those bonds. Now, the city charges a property tax to get that paid. This solved that problem. Tempe tax pro taxpayers' property is not at risk because the only property that's in the district that can sell bonds is the 46 acres. There's a special community facilities district that's formed, and the land itself is put up as a pledge, just like you borrow money against your house. You want to buy a house, you borrow money from a bank, you get the money, you pay the seller. Now you have a house with a lien against it. It's called a deed of trust in yeah. our state. And if you don't pay that mortgage, the bank takes your property. That's what happens here. If the, if the bonds are not paid, the bond issuer, the, the development district, takes the property. Well, how do you, that's not good enough for me even. I don't want to have a piece of property with $200 million in bonds issued in default. So we did something else in this deal. We made the developer agree that before any bonds will ever be issued, the land has to be cleaned. And then the bonds are a first lien against the property. And the developer has to have committed $600 million in debt and equity and start construction on the arena and the practice facility and the music venue and the headquarters. So now the developer and its lenders and, and its owners will have $600 million at risk with $200 million below that mm. with the first right to the property. You think that $600 million in investors is going to let that property go because somebody didn't make the mortgage payment on the bonds? I don't think so. All right. That's, you know, How's that final <laughs> retentive, Mayor? <laughs> All good. <laughs> um, All good. Obviously, lots more to get to. And I want to remind um, everybody watching live on YouTube right now that we are taking chat questions at the end of the show. So if you have questions for the mayors, put them in the chat. We'll star them and get to them at the end. Um, but before we move on, I want to talk about uh, Circle K. I didn't realize how many Circle Ks, like I, we always say they're everywhere. They are everywhere. They were <laughs> everywhere in Toronto. Really? Uh, like, I didn't know they were. Okay. Everywhere oh. in Toronto. So they're international as well. Um, we love Circle K. They have the best snacks. I'm looking forward to having some snacks after the show today. The best coffee, drinks, etc. And yeah, I got to stop there after work to get some gas as well. So <laughs> make sure you're not missing out on all the great stuff Circle K has to offer. Head to circlek.com slash store dash locator to find Circle K's near you. And if you're looking for something else uh, check out OGs because uh, they got something for all your needs. Um, they have a sleep edition gummies. They have um, sativa, indica. You can find them at your local dispensary. They're also delicious, delicious flavors. If you have to be uh, stressing about the vote and the uh, draft that lottery. That is true. You know, I, was, I wasn't going to make it about that because I feel like I always <laughs> do. Um, but check them out. 19 days to go. Um, and you can find OGs at your local dispensary at ogsbrands.com. Got to be 21 or older to enjoy responsibly. All right. I want to touch on this topic that we've, <laughs> we've been talking about this for a very long time. You've both been very vocal about the city of Phoenix's interference in Tempe matters and its use of the airport as a weapon. I have been around a long time. I was at the East Valley Tribune when Hugh used to visit our editorial board. Can you give newcomers a history lesson on this feud that stretches back <laughs> at least as far as 2001, when the Cardinals, as you alluded to earlier, proposed a stadium in Tempe just a mile from Sun Devil Stadium where they played when they arrived in the Valley. Well, I can kick that off by saying uh, I was smart enough to know that Mayor Hallman would handle this better than I ever would. 
And so uh, he was the first chair of our Tempe Aviation Commission a long, long time ago and knows the depth and knows the knowledge and knows the ins and outs of all of this, uh, I would argue better than anyone does because he's, he's immersed himself in it. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, you know, my, my main comment is this. The airport is a valuable, valuable resource for this community, and that includes Tempe. The reason why the square footage price of commercial real estate along the river bottom in downtown Tempe is the uh, highest rate in the entire state of Arizona is because of its location and its proximity. It's yes, it's Tempe Town Lake. It's the proximity to Arizona State University. It's also the proximity to the airport. So no one is trying to hurt the airport or harm the airport or aviation. Uh, but there are guidelines and there are rules and there are regulations that at a federal level that control airports and and um, Tempe, uh, you know, as positioned to where we are, has at times had to talk to the feds and talk to our neighbor to the to the west uh, about those rules and find a set of rules that would work for everyone and enable the airport to be the giant economic engine that it is and that we value as much as anyone else does. And and Mayor Holman knows the details of those battles and those fights and those disagreements um, where we have gotten along, I think, pretty well now for quite a while. And absent this project coming forward, there would not even be any any uh, conversation about us not getting along. But politics as it is, that happens. And so we, uh, the city of Tempe, I believe, is is prepared to respond to that along with the developer. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Mayor Hallman for some of the detail on it. Well, Mayor Giuliano first deserves credit because he was on the council when the fight really first started. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a fight that dates back to the creation of the airport. Tempe existed before the airport was created. And as the airport expanded, uh, it began to fly aircraft over old neighborhoods in Tempe. And that's where I kind of got invited to the party. That was going on through the 70s. And residents in Tempe worked with the airport cooperatively and created a process by which the airport would fly aircraft over the Salt River riverbed and avoid the noise sensitive areas in Tempe. That continued until the early 1990s when Mayor Giuliano was on the council and the city of Tempe had to sue the city of Phoenix because it was going to build a third runway and would not agree that that new third runway, which is on the south side, would be constrained by the same rules that had been put in place for the existing two runways. And the end of that lawsuit was in 1994. Mayor Giuliano had become mayor. Mayor Mitchell had negotiated some of it, but I'm going to actually show you some of the papers. What we have is an agreement that Mayor Giuliano signed in September of 1994. And that agreement said that Sky Harbor and Tempe agreed that Sky Harbor would continue to fly aircraft, including from the new third runway, down the Salt River Riverbed and avoid houses. It also said, and this is the controversial point, uh, yes, according, to, according to the city of Phoenix, there's a section in it that says, quote, Tempe and Phoenix agree to take all actions necessary consistent with applicable laws and regulations to implement land use management strategies recommended in a specific document. And that document was put together in 1989. This is now 1994. It's a document that typically got upgraded every 10 years. Well, Sky Harbor had to upgrade it again in 1999 because the new runway opened. And that document was about how much noise is created and where. That's what this says, that we'll all do that. But it says that Tempe and Phoenix will, consistent with all rules and regulations, apply land use planning strategies. Well, now here we have a project. It's not the first project where Sky Harbor's raised some issues. They say, if you don't do what we say, we're going to move our aircraft flights and fly them over other people's houses just because we're angry. <laughs> now, let's do the logic. Yeah. So 2,000 residences get built on this site in a noisy area called the 65 DNL. To spite Tempe, Sky Harbor sends out 100,000 flyers that tell people, your house currently isn't being overflown by aircraft, but we're going to fly aircraft over your houses because we don't want to fly over these 2,000 residents here. So residents who know their aircraft there, who go into apartments or condos after they've signed an agreement saying, I know their aircraft above us, as if you can't tell just by looking up, they are legally restricted. They're going to be protected by the airport out of spite. And people who have been in Tempe for hundreds of years are now going to get overflown. That makes no sense at all. But moreover, they can't do it because legally 
it's not this agreement, this silly agreement that says where the aircraft fly. It's this federal order. The FAA entered an order in 1994 at Mayor Giuliano's final sign-off hmm. with a letter, Dear Mayor Giuliano, and it then goes on to explain, attached is the final order that says aircraft will all have to fly down the Salt River Riverbed. That's not Sky Harbor getting to choose that. That's the federal government saying that's where aircraft will fly. Now, Mayor Giuliano's right. I don't want to see the airport damaged. I'm not about destroying an important asset. But I'm not about to let them push my city around. And that's how I ended up in this chair today. Because it was Sky Harbor arguing that this project would harm the airport. When, in fact, Sky Harbor agreed in 1994 that the kind of project we're putting here, multifamily residential, is legally allowed. i got to move my mic for a second. <laughs> Try not to knock over the water. <laughs> But here is, you can't see it, but they'll have to put it up, is a chart that goes on to say, yeah, I have to hand it to everybody. Why not? You get oh, one, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's the chart that came out of that report that's cited in this agreement that says, and you can see it right there for yourselves, uh, two units side by side, two units over and under, apartments walk up, apartments elevator. That's multifamily residential. And what does it say in the 65 DNL noise? Yes, 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 yes. It's legally allowed. And now Sky Harbor wants to try to change the rules and pretend it's not legally allowed. It's nonsense. And this goes back to Mayor Giuliano. I'm now the chair of the Aviation Commission at his appointment. And he got a demand by the city of Phoenix. He's trying to build Town Lake. And the Sky Harbor tried to stop the acquisition of land by the city of Tempe, land owned by the Bureau of Land Management, a federal agency. And Sky Harbor said, no, 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 BLM, you can't sell that land to Tempe. We object. Unless, does this sound familiar, Neil? Unless, with a gun to our head, unless you agree to something. And what did they want the agreement on? They wanted an agreement that Tempe would not build single-family residential on any of these properties. Why? Mm. Because this goes back that many decades, 70, 80 years, when there was a dump there, that land actually, before there was a dump, was planned to be single-family residential property. And it was still zoned that way. The map still exists that way. This agreement that I did with the Coyotes says that this property is still zoned single-family residential, and the city of Tempe is agreeing to rezone it from that, to tell Sky Harbor, we agree we'll never build single-family residential here. And Mayor Giuliano signed a letter to Phoenix that said, we agree we won't build single-family residential on this site. And Phoenix sent back a letter said, we agree we won't build single-family residential in these noisy areas either, and we're glad you won't either. That was in 1996. Those letters proved, and I have a copy of those too if you want them. Yes, everybody. <laughs> I, I don't play around. All of this stuff is documented. You don't have to believe me because I'll prove it to you. And then in 2013, the Salt River Project wanted to build multifamily residential on the north side of the river where the Cardinal Stadium was going to go, mm -hmm. right? They own the site and are worried Sky Harbor is going to beat them up again. So they asked for a letter from Sky Harbor that said, yes, you can build multifamily residential on your site in a noisy area under aircraft lights. And Sky Harbor sent the letter. Yes, you can build that stuff. You just have to make sure it's built so it's soundproofed mm -hmm. and you have to have an easement on record that says, folks, your, your property is being overflown. That's exactly what this agreement with the Coyotes does. And now they want to change the rules. Why? You tell me. Is it because they don't want a professional sports facility in Tempe that might have gaming associated with it when they've got two facilities in downtown Phoenix? They don't want people in Mesa driving to Tempe to do their uh, stuff that they would do at a professional sports facility and instead go all the way to downtown Phoenix? Maybe. But we've faced this kind of stuff before. And Mayor Giuliano, Mayor Mitchell before him, I stood up to it. And the reality is, when Mayor Giuliano stood up to it, they stopped. During the eight years of my reign of terror as mayor, we didn't have a single problem. And it's only just now started. So you're, you're obviously aware of the legal action that the city of Phoenix took, which precipitated the Coyotes' legal action. In your own professional opinions... What are they trying to accomplish? We've, you've outlined some of what they're trying to accomplish, but is there any merit to this? What What is happening here? What is going to happen other than possibly a delay in the process? I don't I don't has a better crystal ball than I do. Yeah, I don't think there will be a delay. I think, uh, look, this is all of these extraneous issues coming in and trying to provide 
uh, a reason for people not to vote. I don't think the no campaign is about persuading people to vote no. The facts of this deal are so strong that the entire mayor and city council are in favor of it. Uh, and a, a, a mayor who was elected with 57% of the vote only three years ago, and a city count, three of the city council members were elected on the first ballot uh, two years ago. And, uh, and 149 years of former experience of former council members and former mayors who have read development agreements and deals like this for, for all of their tenure, right? Combine all of those people together, 149 years of former folks, 45 years of current mayor and council. So I don't, I, I think, I think the deal is so solid that the only thing the no campaign can do is bring on distractions. And we know that there's folks in Tempe who have a relationship um, uh, in the, with the aviation industry and so forth. And so they're not trying to get people to vote no, I don't, because it's, they can't. It's factually, it doesn't, doesn't hold water, but they can suppress the turnout. They can get people not to vote at all. They can get people to say, oh, gosh, I don't know. I saw that story about the airport or what was that other thing about this or that? And, and, and they just sort of decide it's not important for them to vote. That's what they're trying to accomplish. And that's what all of your listeners have to be sure they're talking to their friends and their family and their coworkers and people at church and people at their, their kids' schools and everything to say, hey, we really need to make sure our ballots get mailed in and we need to express our voice, which may not be the loudest every single day, but we need to get express our voice that this is a really positive uh, opportunity for the city of Tempe. That's my take on why this is, the airport is one of several distractions the other is the ownership group. The other is taxes. Uh, Tempeans are, are look, I'm, I'll go out on a limb here and say that Tempeans are some of the smartest voters in this region. It's one of the most highly educated voter bases, voting bases in this region from a degree standpoint and so forth. Our voters are discerning. They see through the noise. And uh, we just need to make sure everybody turns in their ballots. All right. I want to touch on something else. Uh, we've seen conflicting economic reports or projections on what this will or won't mean for Tempe. Yeah, I'll rip that up in yeah. just a second. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get it. Get Mayor Giuliano, this one's mine. Okay. We, all, we also oh, no, know that both Arizona State University and city staff vetted Alex Morello before moving ahead with their respective relationships. Can you take us inside the, the vetting process for projects of this magnitude for the city? How do you sift through all of that information and and certainly you also have an opinion on the, the reports that are out there. So, yeah, so fire away. Is, I'll, it's a big wind up. First of all, I, I'm a, a fiscal conservative economist by training. Uh, it gets worse than that. I was an economist first and became a lawyer and then a politician. So you can see the direction of my career. It started pretty lowly to begin with. But <laughs> in this instance, uh, I mean, that's why the numbers matter to me. I'm very focused on that kind of stuff. And let's start with those reports. First, we have the pretense of an independent report done by the Grand Canyon Institute. The pretense of that, I say, is because one of the board members, former mayor of Phoenix, wrote an editorial six months or so before this report from the Grand Canyon Institute came out, opposing the project. Then its lead author and researcher is a close friend of the leader of Tempe First, contributed money to her campaigns Nobody in the industry of pretending to be or who actually is independent, objective, and nonpartisan is stupid enough to do that. Then, isn't it amazing that their decision to do this comes up a month and a half ago, and the only people they talked to were the leadership of the Tempe First Opposition Group. So the whole concept that that report is somehow independent or objective is tainted. You're talking but about the Grand Canyon Institute. The Grand Canyon yes. Institute. Yeah. But then you go to the fact that their analysis is based on the arena itself. Will the arena generate resources enough to pay the cost of all of this? They only left out a billion and a half dollars <laughs> of actual development. Yes. You know? I mean, even and Javier so, Gutierrez is, himself says arenas are not the financial drivers correct, of these Correct. And projects. that's why the yes. whole project had to be what it is. Yeah. Because... We made, Tempe made, first time in Arizona history, the developer pays for the arena. Now the developer's got to make money to make up for that. Then we made the developer pay half of that $500 million problem. So now they're $750 million in the hole, $800 million. They've got to generate a project that can carry that weight. That's why it had to be a big project. But then let's come back. 
So now you have this little institution, been in Arizona, been in Tempe since Phoenix got the insane asylum, because that was the deal cut. Phoenix got the valuable asset of the of the mental hospital, and Tempe got the normal school, ultimately now what is Arizona State University, an agency that absolutely must maintain its reputation as being independent and objective. And so the folks at the business school take all of the stuff from the reports and go through it with a fine tooth comb and come out and say, you guys are wrong. You were too conservative in your numbers. Well, my direction, working with the consultants we hired, we had to have independent consultants who look very carefully at this because I don't represent the coyotes. I'm not interested in whether their deal makes money. I'm interested in does the city of Tempe get protected in that instrument? And do we likely cover all of the costs and eliminate the risk for the city? So that started with, let's look at Alex Morello and his character and his capacity. We did a deep dive in that. I am on the inside, but I can't reveal stuff because it's confidential information. Sure. He's a private business person who is in a very competitive market and has to protect that. But I can tell you, if you have, I, I can't present those papers to you, but I can give you my integrity. In looking at his financials, in er interviewing the seven largest banks he deals with, which are all banks you know, in interviewing folks from the Nevada Gaming Commission. Why? Because he owns two casinos. Interviewing folks at the SAC, the, the Securities Exchange Commission, because he's got a regulated bank, and talking directly with the commissioner of the NHL. All people who are regulating his businesses at the highest level, all said, this guy's exactly what he tells you he is. He's honorable, he's good to do business with, he keeps his word, and he does what he says he's gonna do. And then looking at his financial capacity, yes, indeed, he can do this project. So all those people who are putting out scurrilous material about this family, I think that's absurd. It's obscene, it's despicable, because this guy ought to be celebrated as an example of an American immigrant success story who's built everything he's got with his own hands. And that is something we ought to be celebrating as diversifying, as an amazing story. And what they're doing to this family and their reputation, as well as trying to destroy this deal, I find despicable. All right. Um, I want to ask each of you individually, so whoever wants to start off um, can go first. But what about this project is so important and attractive to you both? He's the visionary. I'll let him mm -hmm. take Go it. ahead. I'm the green eye shade guy. <laughs> Look, it really is. It, it is the culmination of a vision of transforming the land adjacent to the dry river bottom in Tempe from border to border, right? From the West End, at we were priest all the way to the East End, east of McClintock. And uh, it was in 1967 that ASU faculty gave students an idea and said, do something with this dry river bottom. What could it be one day? 20 years later, the region had a vote to, that would have raised a property tax uh, to do 55 miles of, of green belt and all sorts of different things along the, the river bottom, the dry salt river bottom, uh, and the vote failed. But the city of Tempe voters voted yes. So then Mayor Harry Mitchell, my predecessor, said, well, we need to figure out what do we do in Tempe? Our voters said yes and talked about it for a long time and a lot of different ideas and a lot of different options and a lot of geography and a whole lot of things had to be figured out what do we do if it's we if we're only doing something within our border what could it be the vision came about to form a town lake uh, which was not an easy one in itself because the federal government uh, classified it as a navigable waterway the dry river bottom was a navigable waterway in the united states of america over 20 different partners from the local, regional, state, and a dozen federal agencies had to participate uh, to be able to help create the vision for what Tempe Town Lake could be. And uh, when I ran for mayor in 1994, Mayor Holman would probably remember, I said, this is a really great thing. And but are we ever going to do it? Because if we're really never going to do it, y'all have been talking about this for almost 30 years. <laughs> Let's figure out how we really do this. And with a very, very dedicated and smart team, staff and community people on the Rio Salado, City of Tempe, Rio Salado Commission, we broke ground on building Tempe Town Lake in 1997, 30 years after it was first thought about in an ASU class. 
And about 10 years after uh, the regional vote failed, but Tempe voters voted yes. In two years, the lake was done in 99. Then, of course, you had a little bit of a downturn in the economy that came a little bit later, but look at what it is now. And Mayor Hallman will also re probably remember the folks who came and said to the city council, you're building a boondoggle. No one's going to ever want to work or live in a building next to a fake lake. Uh, this is going to drain the city of Tempe in the future. It will never be successful. Well, and I don't have much to say to those folks other, other than have a look, right? So what we're talking about now at the very West End was always designed as high intensity, multi-use, um, and, and a dense, it was going to have to be dense because the, the math was going to have to be upwards so that it could pay for all the issues we talked about at the beginning of the show. And we're, I just think we're very fortunate that, um, you know, the prof owner of a professional sports team came along who has, who shares Tempe's vision for something more than just sports on that land and will be able to be an economic driver and an economic engine and not just for the city of Tempe, Maricopa County. The jurisdiction of Maricopa County will make a couple hundred million dollars over time. 240, 240 million. And the state of Arizona will see revenue of $1 billion in the first 30 years of this project. Now, if you care about everything going on in the state of Arizona, you want to see Arizona's economy thrive and grow. And Tempe will continue as we are now. We will be an even more large player in keeping the economy of the state of Arizona and Maricopa County strong and prosperous into the future. I'm just going to add, so Mayor Giuliano sloughed over some really hard things. It wasn't always obvious. It was the two of us in a, in a hotel uh, conference room finally coming to terms with the fact that the West End had to be developed this way because there right. were all kinds of proposals before that. But even before that, Mayor Giuliano got elected in 1994 with his primary mission of build the lake, that he was the bridge to the future. That wasn't easy. He had people like me complaining about the numbers because that's what I do. He remembers that. I mean, he would say, I I oppo oppose the project. And the answer was, no, I oppose how the numbers work. We can make them work. We've gotten, we figured out how to work together over the years. And that I was standing by his side in 1999 when we turned on the tap. The issue is that kind of vision and that kind of hard work is what's represented in this deal. And this was a city staff like the city staff in 1994 when Mayor Giuliano said, enough, figure it out, that put their nose to the grindstone. And people like Patrick Flynn and Dave Fackler and Steve Nielsen, yeah. uh, yes. you know, in, in one in, uh, dear friends of ours, ultimately, who figured it out and argued with me and argued with Neil. And we kept working on it. That's what this is. This is decades of work knowing that we've got a huge toxic waste dump underneath this land that's been threatening our water table. Now it is touching the water table. Mm. And now is the time to get it done. And the, um, the amount of effort put into this is also based on all of these foundations. The Tempe Marketplace work we did together, mm -hmm. the work we did on the Arts Center, and everything since all have taught us how to do these deals and do them better. And this is as Mayor Woods said, the finest deal for a professional sports facility in the state of Arizona's history. And it is. And right. those people who are saying this is subsidizing a billionaire apparently don't know how to do math. Because when you right. add up all the money that the developer has to put into this project and what the city of Tempe ultimately puts in, the developer is subsidizing the city of Tempe well over $300 million. That's why it's such a boondoggle for Tempe not for the developer. Yeah, and, I, and thank you, Hugh. That's, that's incredibly accurate and, and appreciated. Look, with the, during the times of, of Town Lake, and I want, to, I want to commend Mayor Woods and his council, uh, this is bold. This is visionary. This isn't just getting together on Thursday night and, and processing, zoning, you know. This is, this, is the, this is thinking 20, 30 years into the future of the community. And I can remember during Town Lake when people said this is that's never going to work and so forth that, you know, I haven't said too many things that are worth remembering. But one of the things I said was <laughs> our challenges are going to equal the greatness we desire. And it was a big challenge. There was a re there was another reason every Thursday night for years as to why we should turn around and forget this whole thing, because it was just too big. Here's another problem. Here's another mess. The state of Arizona doesn't want to do this. 
the Army Corps of Engineers says you're going to have to do this. Oh, the price just went up, right? So there's always reasons to turn around. But this council and this mayor have said, we're moving forward with this. They put out the RFP. They negotiated hard. They got Mayor Hallman involved to represent them, which is probably one of the smartest things they did. And now uh, they have a deal before our voters. And if it was, let me say this, if it was not a sound financial deal, Mayor Hallman and I wouldn't be supporting it. If it was, if it was a deal with someone who was unsavory or that uh, re whose reputation was not up to snuff, um, we wouldn't be supporting it. We wouldn't be supporting the council going forward with it. That's not who Tempe is, right? So I'm, I'm excited about the whole thing. I'm very positive about all of it. And uh, you know, I'm happy I lived long enough to hopefully see the voters vote yes and, uh, and be there for the groundbreaking. And maybe, maybe I'll make it around for another 20 years and, and see it in its completion. But it's very, very positive for the future of Tempe. And uh, I'm just proud to be in and happy to just be a supporter and, and encouraging my friends and neighbors to all vote yes. All right. Well, we have we got a few um, listener questions, which we'll get to here in just a second before we wrap this up again. Thank you both so much um, for your time. But before okay. before we wrap up, um, just want to let everybody know with the NFL draft tonight, um, the, That's right. get your bets in. Um, you can actually bet on who's going to get picked first, second, third overall, all of that. There's all sorts of betting you can do um, when it comes to the NFL draft. Or if you don't want to bet on that, NBA, NHL playoffs are going on right now. Um, so make sure you check out BetMGM to place all of your bets. Uh, we're, we're really excited about this partnership with them. We've been doing Suns playoff away watch parties at BetMGM. We have a Knockout Nights Cornhole League kicking off next month. Craig and Petey and I are going to be on yeah, a team Lee together. Lee is the ringer on this team, by the way. Yeah, I need to get practicing, though. Um, so check out BetMGM if you haven't already. Sign up using the bonus code PHNX. And there's a few different offers depending on where you live. But for our Arizona audience, you'll get up to $100 in bonus bets on your first wager with BetMGM. MGM. Again, make sure you use bonus code PHNX. You can check out the show notes for full details. And now my favorite part, listen to Shane talk about the <laughs> disclaimer. Disclaimer, 21 plus to wager. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in Washington, D.C., Mississippi, Nevada, New York, and Ontario. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP-ARIZONA, 1-800-522-4700, Kansas, Nevada, 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts, 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA, 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. All right. And speaking of the NFL draft um, and speaking of Tempe, if you want to watch the NFL draft, the place, the best place to do it is at Four Peaks H Street Pub in Tempe. We'll be out there this afternoon. Our PHNX Cardinal show will be broadcasting live from Four Peaks starting at 445. So if you're in the area, stop by, grab yourself some Redbird Lager Pine, some Wow Weed, some Kilt Lifter, tons of specials going on um, if you show up at the Four Peaks H Street Pub. Like I said, the best place to take in the NFL draft, and that is today already. Uh, so for those of you who have registered, we look forward to seeing you there. And regardless of where you're watching it, make sure you're enjoying a delicious Red Bird lager. And if you're going to drink, you must be 21 or older to enjoy responsibly. All right, let's wrap this up. We got a few listener questions. Jacob, if you don't mind clicking on the favorites tab so I can see what we got. Um, let's take this first one from AZ Sailor 8. Will Tempe Town Lake get expanded to Priest Road once this passes? <laughs> Who wants to? I'll, I'll, take I, can, I can address that. Um, look, the lake is where it is primarily because of the geography of the river bottom and the requirement that we had from the federal government to rechannelize the bottom of the river to put in Tempe Town Lake. Now, what that means is you have the lake bottom, the dry river bottom, and you, we, we basically dug a big tunnel out of the bottom of the river to rechannel the river bottom. Tempe Town Lake is actually a flood control project, both with a 100-year flood control plane and a 500-year flood control plane. I'm going to bet that none of us listening will live long enough for either the 100 or 500-year <laughs> flood. If there's a 500-year flood, all Everything's bets are off. Gone. Yeah, all bets. All are bets off. are off for everything. Everything has already ended if there's a 500 year flood, and if there's a hundred year flood, uh, it's at least a hundred years away from now. So uh, the the lake is where it is because of geography. Look, could could something be extended? Who knows? There's all I can kinds. Tell, of I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt Neil. Come on, let's be realistic. He's right. It's geographic, but it's also physics. 
this is how Town right. Lake is built. This is the east end and this is the west end. Right. It goes from five feet to 16 feet. You can't build farther west because that means water is going to come out of the top and end up gone because the lake is built like this. As you move yeah. farther downstream, the water level is flat. It doesn't bend with the lake like in your bathtub. It's flat like in your bathtub. Right. And so if you move it farther to the west, the water line comes down and we end up with the east end dry. You can't do it. Then somebody says, these are the conspiracy theorists that are up now, Neil. Oh, no, no. Yeah. The developer is going to make Tempe put Town Lake in front of the arena. No, it doesn't work for the other reason because the bathtub truly is a bathtub. The, the right. bottom of the riverbed there, because of a mountain, is covered with stone. And so it is less permeable. Mm -hmm. And so water doesn't leak out the bottom. That's why right. his location of the bathtub was so important. You can't do it. Uh, west of the current dam structure. Well, so much for the money shot during the Stanley Cup playoffs <laughs> exactly. across the water. The oh, no, arena. no, no. That's not true. You'll get the you money, cut the shot. money shot. shot. It, it's just going to, that money shot's going to be farther east looking back okay. because every Cardinals game and every Suns game and every Diamondbacks game focuses on the brilliance of those facilities by focusing on Town Lake. <laughs> okay. I love Every it. Every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, we might have gotten to this, so if, if we have, we can skip it. But um, about the airport in Tempe again, has there been any communication between Tempe and Bluebird and Sky Harbor to move the quote issue I'll be, along? I'll be short and qu quick on it. On November 29th, when the deal document was done, to get it done, the very last negotiation I had to deal with was with Sky Harbor, with the airport director and his lawyer with the head of the Coyotes, Javier Gutierrez, and his lawyer, and me representing Tempe. And the last issue was Sky Harbor complaining about the height of cranes. I don't mean the ones that fly, but the mm -hmm. ones that build buildings. And that document includes a specific provision negotiated in that last phone call. And I said, are we done now? And the answer from the airport was yes. Javier, are we done? Nick, are we done? Yes. So everybody's good. The document's ready to go. We're all together on this. Mm. Yes. So I can't tell you what's motivated them to change their minds, but that deal document included consent by Sky Harbor with special provisions written just for the airport that were included. And my guess is the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, is putting pressure on Sky Harbor now as a grant recipient from the FAA to try to reduce the number of residents living in and near the area, and Sky Harbor's gone overboard to try to do that. It also might be, because somebody's asked this question, what's really going on here? This is really about a union play by a union out of Los Angeles that's representing hotel workers Case. and now, that and, and, well, and worker power. Yes. Okay. They've sued the city of Tempe okay. once before on another deal. They are now the ones investing in this opposition campaign. Why? Because when they approached... Uh, Mr. Morello and said, you have to unionize everything, both in construction and in operations. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. We're not going to sign a project labor agreement that's behind closed doors in a smoke-filled room. What I will do is commit to using union labor in constructing this project. And that agreement requires 25% of the construction of the main project be union labor. And the reason that was important to him is it's transparent. The reason it was important to me the project labor agreement would have required a certain number of union workers, which the state doesn't have. Right. So they would have brought laborers from California and other states that are unionized to take jobs that are intended to go to Tempe residents, to Phoenix residents, to Arizona residents to build this project. That's completely ridiculous that you're putting the interests of a union and the power it wants to build over the interests of the people in Arizona who are available to build this project union or not. And I find that to be absurd. And that pretty much answers the other question about who is really uh, the motivation of the opponents. But um, Mayor Giuliano, well, anything in fact, to you've, add? Got, you've got a council member at the city of Phoenix involved in these union organizations, helping the city of Phoenix decide to sue the city of Tempe. You think that's objective? You think that's not a conflict of interest? Somebody ought to be looking at that pretty closely. Neil, anything further? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Great. It was a bit of a mic drop, I, like I admit. So. Yes, yes, once again. Sorry, man. Uh, thank you to all of our listeners um, who ask questions. We do appreciate it. Um, and then, I guess, just one more from us, kind yeah, of. Yeah, anything else that it. you want our viewers to know? Anything we've missed? 
Well, everyone who's listening uh, within earshot needs to make sure they're going through their Rolodex, calling people, reminding people uh, if they live in Tempe and they're a registered voter that their ballot is somewhere on their kitchen table or their foyer table or their home office desk or somewhere, and they need to fill it out and they need to get it in the mail. It's really that simple. Uh, and, and I believe if there's, a, if there's a good, strong turnout, we're going to win this thing because the, the, the project is, is solid. The partnership is solid. The mayor and council have done beyond yeoman's work on the due diligence for this, this size of a deal. And uh, I, for one, I trust our mayor and I trust our council the same way residents trusted me uh, a long time ago to, to do what's best. Everyone, we all swore, swore an oath to, you know, serve and protect the city and, and ensure this, the health and well-being of the city and its residents. And that's what our mayor and council have done by offering this deal, which is bold and visionary and long term into the future, providing the kind of support and revenue that this community is going to need long term uh, in the city of Tempe. So I'm a, I'm a strong, as you, as you know, a strong and vocal yes for this project for all the reasons I've talked about. And uh, thank you for having me on today and and giving me an opportunity to talk about it. You? Uh, Mayor Giuliano, I think, said most of it, but I can't resist. So I'm here because uh, I was asked to help my city, and I did that. And Mayor Giuliano said, you know, we trust our council. He had to put up with me enough to know that I was sort of raised by Ronald Wilson Reagan, who said at Reykjavik, trust but verify. And that's why I have all the paper, and that's what my job was in this. It was to make sure when the city council said, we want to do a deal, but only if it's a good deal and we don't have any tax money at risk and the city is not financially at risk. And that was my job, to verify and put all of that together. And that work has been done. The community will be wildly benefited from this. We've talked on some of this stuff. I tend to go to the financial. It is that not only does the developer bear these risks and clean up an environmental waste dump, but let's also talk about the fact that hundreds of millions of dollars goes into Tempe coffers for use for public activity, for police and fire and parks and recreation and all that. As Mayor Giuliano noted, a billion dollars, no money from the state at all in this, a billion dollars goes to the state coffers for spending. 240 million goes to the county. But then it is the community pride. Tempe is, notwithstanding just the numbers guy, the vision that Mayor Giuliano articulated and that Harry Mitchell articulated and, and people that came before all of us envisioned a city that would create a community that hung together. Tempe is the major city that's landlocked. It punches way above its weight as a small town. It's 42 square miles. It's less than a tenth the size of the city of Phoenix. We have a population of only 180,000 uh, 80, residents. And this community has a sense of community because of things like this, where projects came together and we invented some of the stuff that this state now relies on and benefits from. Our community still has that old town fabric. It is the largest small town you ever want to be part of. And that community spirit, I believe, will carry us to success in this. I'm here now as an advocate only because I know what that deal now means to my community, what it will deliver to my city, what a mess it will clean up, and the benefits that it's going to deliver for everybody across the demographics. And I am strongly supportive of Propositions 301, 302, and 303 because I know what's in that deal, and it is a fantastic deal, and, the, and Mayor Woods is right. It is the best deal that's ever been done for a professional sports facility in this state's history. Hugh and Neil, we cannot thank you enough for taking time out of what I know is a crazy day for both of you um, and sharing your insights, sharing your thoughts. Really, really appreciate you taking the time. Yep, absolutely. Thank you again. And thanks again to everybody for listening, watching, chiming in. Um, be sure to subscribe to the PHX Sports YouTube channel. Obviously, we're going to talk about the vote when it when it <laughs> comes up. So you know where to find all of that information. Um, and you can follow us on Twitter at PHNX underscore Coyotes. We will be live tomorrow at 11 a.m. Hope to see everybody there again. Thank you all so much for all this wonderful show today. And we'll see everybody tomorrow.